So, it's been a week or so since my last video and I asked you guys to leave a comment if you wanted a real tutorial. Well, no one out of my friend circle bothered to do so except this one heavenly soul. I was so moved by this one comment, I decided to make an entire tutorial for this one person. But sadly enough, the fucking comment disappeared from the fucking comment section the next day. But I made it anyway, so... To be honest, I've never made a third-person shooter controller before, so let's do some case study with Metal Gear Solid 5 before we jump into coding. Imagine a vector going straight into your screen, let's call this the view direction. Now imagine a vector perpendicular to the view direction, let's call this the perpendicular vector. Now if you press up or down arrow, then snake moves forward and backwards in line with the view direction. Now if you press left or right, he moves perpendicular to the view direction. If you give both horizontal and vertical input, then the player moves midway between the view direction and the perpendicular vector. This direction in which snake moves can be calculated using simple vector mathematics by just multiplying the view direction by the vertical input and the perpendicular vector by horizontal input and adding them both and you get the direction in which uh, he needs to move. Now let's look at how snake aims. When you aim at nothing, snake looks like he is pointing towards the center of the screen. This is done by making him point the gun at a position that is both in line with the view direction but also far away from it. Let's call this point the far point. But when the path between the gun and the far point is obstructed by something, we now have two target positions for our snake to look at. One is the apparent position which is the point of obstruction between the camera and the far point. And the other is the real position which is nothing but the point of obstruction between the gun and the camera's obstruction point. Snake always looks at the real position. So in this tutorial we are going to make all the basic components for this type of controller. First we need a character. I'm gonna download one from XAML because 3D modeling is a pain in the neck. Along with the 3D model, download the Shooter Animation Pack or if you want to bring in your own animation, feel free to do so. Create a new Unity project and import the character. Don't forget to mention the animation and the characters are a humanoid while inputting. Create an animator and create a basic state mission with just two states for now. If no input is given, then he stays idle, else he walks. Now let's first look at the camera movements. Create an empty game object and name it Yao. Create another empty game object, name it Pitch as a child of Yao. Again create another one named Shake as a child of Pitch. At the end of the hierarchy, put the camera. We do this setup to assign a role to each empty game object. Yao controls Yao, Pitch controls the Pitch, Shake controls Shake. Pretty simple. Now create a script for the camera and let's start coding. First, we need to initialize the angle variables, rot x and rot y with something. Rot x stores the pitch of the camera, rot y stores the yaw of the camera. We just have to store the pitch game object's x angle in rot x and yaw's y angle in the rot y at the start. Then we initialize the cam variable with the camera component attached to the camera to which the script belongs to. Next step is to go get the input from the mouse. We do this in the getMouseParam function on every update. Before getting into this, create a class named ControlStatic that holds all the static constants and enumerators that are needed to name the inputs. Doing this makes it easy for you to maintain the input constants in case you need to change it in the future. Let's get back to the getMouseParam. What we are doing here is first we get the delta change in the Y mouse axis and multiply it with the time taken per frame and amplify it with mouse smoothness and add it to the existing pitch angle stored in rot x variable in each frame. Thus we obtain the new pitch that is needed for the corresponding mouse movement. This controls the pitch and the pitch needs to be locked up and down. We do the same with the mouse's x axis input without clamping but resetting it to zero every complete revolution in any direction. And then after calculating the angles, we check if aim input is given and the aim boolean is set true or false accordingly. First let's handle the rotation part. Create a new function for the rotation called camera rotation and then rotate the yaw and pitch by initializing a quaternion with the new updated angles. For yaw we change the y axis angle and pass the same angle for the rest of the axis as it is. Now we slowly interpolate between the current rotation and the new rotation. 
We do the same with the pitch, but here we only change the angle for x-axis instead of the y-axis. And that's it for the rotation. Now let's deal with the camera's translation. We need to move the topmost game object in the camera setup, which is the yaw, and make it follow the player. To do that, we first place a empty target game object as a child of the character so that the target will move along with the character. Then we slowly interpolate between the yaw's position and the target position. Now the camera will follow the player wherever he moves. Now let's handle aiming. For this purpose, we have two vectors. One is for normal offset and the other is for offset during aiming. Both of which is a public vector 3 variable that can be adjusted in the inspector panel. If player is aiming, then the field of view is set to FOV aim and the offset is set as aim offset. If the player is not aiming, then the field of view is set to FOV norm and the offset is set as cam offset. The field of view is smoothly interpolated between the new field of view and the current one and then the local position of the camera is smoothly set to the current offset chosen. After all the rotation and translation of the camera, we finally handle the camera collision by casting a ray from the target to the camera and checking for obstruction. If something obstructs the path, then the distance from the target to the point of obstruction is multiplied with the rays direction and then added to the target positions to get the new position in front of the obstruction. Finally, after all that, we now set the far point by casting ray from the camera in the direction of its forward component. If something is hit, that is set as the far point aka look position. If nothing is hit, then the local position of the target is set in such a way that there is a displacement in the Z direction since the look target is a child of the camera itself. Of course, you can do this in a better way. Now, just call all the function in the fixed update. And that's it. Just go ahead and set all the needed public variables and the camera will work fine. Now, let's handle the play movement. But before that, we need to make some changes to the animator. Go to the animator in the base layer, drag and drop 4 animation for walk, run, on air and idle animation with idle animation as the entry state. The player should be able to go from any state to any state back and forth. So give all the possible transition from all the state to all the state. To control the animation states, create the set of parameters as shown. Horizontal and vertical parameters for storing horizontal and vertical input values. Run is true if the player presses shift while moving. Ignore these two for now because these two are for IK and I'll be talk talking about that later. X aiming is true if the player is aiming. Aim angle is the angle with the world up axis at which the player or the camera is looking at. Walk is true if the player is just walking. Is in angle is true if the player is in angle with the camera's forward component. On ground is true if the player is on the ground. Now let's see the transitions. The player is idle if he is on the ground and no input is given. If walk is set to true and the run is false, then the animator state changes from idle to walk. If run is true and the animator changes state from idle or walk to run. If the player is not on ground, then whatever the state might be, a transition from the current state to the on-air animation is played. This is the content of the base layer. Uh, now let's look at the aiming layer. In this layer, we simply have one state which is a blend tree between two animations aim up and aim down the two animations is blend according to the aim angle if aim angle is 1 then aim down is played if aim angle is 170 then aim up is played you can set both the lower and upper values here anything in between blends the two animation with respect to the aim angle and also this layer has an avatar mask set to only influence the spine bone and nothing else now let's move on to the next layer, crouch. Here we have two states, one is crouch idle and the other is crouch walk, which is a blend tree that blends between four crouch walk animations based on the horizontal and vertical values. This blend tree I made is useless, so feel free to just use a walk animation. And for the transition, the state transitions from idle state to walk state if walk or run is true and comes back if both of them are false. And that's it for the animator, now let's look at the player movements and how to set these animator parameters. And again, before that, create a class with all the static constant needed for the animation parameters. Now coming back to the player movement, start by locking the cursor and setting it invisible. Then get the player's animator component and rigid body component. Now we have to get all the input parameters and animation parameters for determining the animation state and making the player move accordingly. We do this in get param function, where we first set the horizontal axis value, then set the vertical axis value, 
both the values are floating point values ranging from negative 1 to positive 1. So if the absolute of either of the values is greater than 0, then player should move. If crouch key is pressed, then is crouching is true. If aim button is pressed, aiming is set to true. If simultaneously locomotion is true and sprint button is pressed and the player is not aiming, then running is set to true and walking is set to false. Else if it's just locomotion, then walking is set to true. If no input is given, then both is walking and is running is set to true. After all the state and movement related boolean and input values are set, now we want to make the player move. We do this in the handle movement function. The movement vector is calculated with the move direction function which takes the forward component of the camera and multiply it with vertical value and right component with horizontal and then add both the products and setting the y value to 0 to ensure that he only moves in the xz plane and then return the direction vector after normalization with the movement direction calculated now it's time to make the player move we do this by multiplying the direction vector by move speed and interpolating between the rigid body's velocity and the calculated target velocity. Don't forget to add the rigid body component to your character or Unity will throw a null reference error. And that's it, now let's handle the rotation of the player. We do this in the handle rotation function. Whenever the player is not aiming and is just on locomotion, the player should be rotated in the direction in which the player is moving. So the look angle is calculated with the move direction, else if the player is aiming, then the look direction is used instead. This look direction is vector that lays flat on the XZ plane and has the same rotation as the camera. That's it for the player rotation. Now let's check if the player is on ground or not. We do this in the ground function. We first cast a ray from the player's position with some offset in the Y direction to adjust the origin of ray cast and also we cast it in the direction of the world down. We check if the ray hits a collider other than the player. If something is hit on the first ray from the center, then the for loop will break the first time the control flow enters the loop. If nothing was hit, then we cast a ray in a circular fashion around the origin. We do this by providing the number of rays you want to cast and divide 360 by it, which is nothing but the angle which will be used to rotate the radius each time the loop executes in order to get the new origin of ray from which it is to be casted down. If something is hit in one of those rays, then the loop breaks and G hit is set to true. If true, then that means the character is on ground. If not, we introduce gravity by making the character move down each frame in the y-axis. Finally, we set the on-ground variable to g-hit. And that's it, we are almost done with the player movement. Now we just have to set all the animation parameters. We do this in the setParam function, and also if the player is crouching, then we set the weight of the crouch layer to 1. If not, we set it to 0. Similarly, if the aiming is true, Aiming layer weight is set to 1 or else it is set to 0. And then the aim angle is set with the aim pitch function, which simply calculates the angle between the camera's forward component and the world up and then set the same angle in the animator. Everything is done except the inverse kinematic part. Let's handle that in a separate script. Before this, make a makeshift gun called makeshift gun with two empty game objects particular to this specific gun to specify where the right hand and left hand should go. Making the gun this way makes it easy to move the IK targets of both the hands to the desired gun position. To adjust these poses, just go ahead and adjust it in the runtime and then copy the transform, then go back and paste it. And that's it. Both of these left and right hand position targets are attached to the gun game object with a script and both these values are set as a public variable. We do this so that it will be easier to get both of these transform when a new gun is equipped. And then add two more empty game objects, specify where the gun should be pivoted in case aiming is true and also specify where the default idle position is in case aiming is false. And then add two more empty game objects for the right elbow hint and left elbow hint to give a clue as to where the elbow should be looking at. Place it somewhere down like this. so the hands won't get into some weird position. Now we are ready to go to the coding section. First declare all the variables to hold this newly created transform. 
And then in start, first set the left hand target and right hand target to the transform that we stored in the gun. Then get the animator of the character. Then we proceed to modify the gun's rotation and position in the fixed update. To do this, first we get the right shoulder bones transform since both the aim position and idle position are going to be offset relative to the right shoulder position. And finally make the aim posts always look at the global look at target. Now if aiming is true, the position and rotation is set to the aim transform. If aiming is false, then both position and rotation is set to idle transform. After adjusting the offset, this should give you something like this. As you can see, the gun is simply switching between the idle pose and the aim pose. You can actually change the offset for the aim pose and the idle pose if you want. It'll look something like this. As you can see, the hands are not in the right position. This is because we did not set the IK target position. So now all that is left for the aiming part is to make the IK target work. We do this with the help of Unity's inbuilt IK system. First we make the head and body look at the target by specifying the weight of the transformation and the look position which is the global look at target. Then we set one as the weight for rotating and positioning right hand, left hand and, uh, and IK hint for the same. After setting the weight, we now set the position and rotation. From the transforms, we set up real. After setting the weight, now we set the position and rotation from the transform we set up earlier. And then, we only set the position for the IK hint. Rotation is not needed. The results should be something like this. As you can see, as he is aiming, his, his hands are in the uh, correct position. If you want to adjust that, then just go to the left hand pose of the gun, then move it and rotate it as you like. And then copy the transform and paste it in there after pausing the game. Okay, for the last part, let's do the foot IK. How this works is we basically cast ray from the foot position with an offset in the y direction towards the ground. When this ray hits the ground or anything other than the player's own collider, it brings the leg about that position. And also calculates the direction in which the foot should be positioned with the help of the normal vector at the point of contact. This should only happen when the player's legs are intended to be on the ground. So to make it only affect the IK when it's needed, we use curves. You can shape these curves to give some values as the animation plays. This is basically a time function that we can define with the shape of the curve. How can this help you with knowing when to activate the IK? This can be done by making the curve value 1 when the foot is supposed to be on the ground. For example, look at the left foot right now. When it is fully on the ground, it's the curve is made to return a value of 1. When it is, uh, when it is supposed to be not snapped to ground, uh, the value is zero and similarly we do the same to the other foot and as you can see in idle animation the foot is always supposed to be on the ground so the uh, go as a constant value of one throughout the animation we do one curve for each foot and create animation parameters with the same name as that is in the curve now all that is left to do is get these two values uh, from the animator and set it as the weight for the right and left foot uh, to control the effect of the IK target. Zero means no effect, one means fully affected. And also don't forget to place an empty game object in front of the knees as we did with the elbows to provide a clue as to where the uh, knee should be pointing at. And that's it, everything works fine as it's meant to be. But we got a little problem here. Dude bends crazy when you shoot without aiming. To fix this problem, we need to introduce a new boolean variable named firing in a player movement script and store the boolean indicating if the player is pressing the fire button or not and just add the boolean variable to every if condition where aiming is present. Those if conditions would be this and this and this and that's it the problem will be fixed if you get back to unity and press play and now he turns to the desired position but still it's not very perfect 
But that is all we need to make a basic third person shooter controller so I'm going to finish the tutorial right here. If you want to tweak this script just go ahead, uh, the link is in the description and just download it and do what you want. If you guys want me to build upon this tutorial and cover stuff like switching between weapons and also refining the animation system or anything else, just let me know in the comment section and I'll do it. And also I'm not sure if the tutorial is adequate or not so please let me know what I should improve on so I'll make sure what I'm doing is not going to waste. And also to better understand the tutorial just download the project file first and play with it and discover where everything goes and what components are attached to the game object to not get lost while I'm explaining things. And then go along with the tutorial.